The guns and ammunition are real, but these Ukrainian soldiers are far from the battlefields near their homes. Come on, come on, come on. This is southern England on a British military base, where British, Canadian and other allies are training Ukrainian recruits in the skills they need to survive and go on the offensive against Vladimir Putin's army. There's definitely a sense of a purpose and a sense of urgency. Major Mike Powell commands the roughly 160 Canadian military trainers here. What I noticed about the courses that ran uh, throughout the summer was there was a, a real focus on defensive operations and where we're now uh, trying really hard to instill in the candidates um, what I'll call a, an offensive spirit or a patrolling spirit. In southern Ukraine, near Kherson and in eastern Donbass, Ukraine's army has been methodically regaining territory occupied by Russia. This scenario is meant to simulate just a small part of what the recruits will experience with the noise and chaos of an assault on the enemy. This live fire exercise is the culmination of five weeks of basic training. Within days, these troops will be going back to Ukraine, some straight to the front lines. Perhaps the biggest difference between getting trained here and in Ukraine is safety, says this soldier who goes by the name Panda. Until a few weeks ago, he worked as a design engineer in western Ukraine. We don't hear any siren on early morning, don't uh, missile, don't get in our trench or buildings, and we concentrate on our training. The recruits will leave here trained in weapons, in basic tactics and how to treat combat wounds in the field, which was the goal of this simulation. You know, at every opportunity, they always want to know more. They always want to have further training. They want to do more repetitions, and it's all about building up that confidence. 5,000 Ukrainian soldiers have already gone through the program, and officers here say the goal is to get 20,000 new soldiers trained up and made as lethal as possible. Chris Brown, CBC News in Southern England.